This is just another series of old uh, mines that we're looking for, coal mines going back to the early 1900s. And uh, they're going to be, uh, this is another series of coal mines, they're going to be a little bit farther up on this ridge. So we're going to just try to make our way up there. And it should be a whole series of them to see what, uh, see what they look like. And this is just a kind of a, just to show <laughs> the wood line and going up that steep ridge right there we got to cross a few ridges to get to it so this is another series of uh mines that we've got to uh go high up on the ridge deep in the woods to get to so all right okay uh pretty pretty good ways back here in the woods looking for these mines and uh down below is supposed to be a tramway bed and uh, should take us right around to some of these mines. This is just another series of old coal drift mines that were connected by tramways, which carried the coal by electric or gasoline locomotives, or even mules and horses, down to the loading ship and or the coal washer. So, but uh, anyway, pretty pretty rugged terrain back here. And it's just hard to believe 120 years ago there were hundreds of men working up here in these woods and these coal mines. No trace of them anymore. Okay, uh, this is one of the main tramway lines that uh, will take us to these series of drift mines. That right there, that depression, that used to be one. And uh, this, this will take us all the way around the other side of the ridge. And should take us straight to these series of drift mines. There was about 10 of them. So we'll just, uh, first time for us to ever come up here and try to find these. So we figured uh, better go ahead and do it before the, uh, before the foliage comes back up. Okay, uh, we've entered this uh, deep ravine right here with, uh, supposed to be where the coal drift mines are. And you see the, uh, you can see all the coal remains right here. And uh, Mr. Box is down there on a lower tramway bed. And uh, this is one of the, this is one of the mines right here. And uh, I tell you, these guys back in the day, man, they had to go deep back in these ravines to find these coal seams. But uh, anyway, beautiful topography. I mean, just absolutely beautiful really amazing so anyway uh we're going to keep heading straight and see if we can uh see if we can find these they shouldn't be too far up okay this uh deep ravine this haulage splits left splits right and uh these are some of the mine workings right here going back to the early 1900s <clears throat> see one of them right here how's that other one look completely closed completely closed eh? okay so there's another big one right over there mr. box said it's completely closed and this one this one looks closed too so anyway we are way back in this holler uh, it's filled with water all right so we'll see what else uh, else we can find. Okay, this this is one of the uh, big big coal drift mine openings right here. Mr. Box checked it out, said it's uh, closed. So we're going to be making our way back down out of the holler here, uh, following the ridge line. We're the ridge lines are about 750 feet uh, to the top, so we're way down here in the bottom. But we had to climb and. Ex uh, probably about 500 feet just to get to this point so these are some high ridge lines up here so and we'll just be heading back down this way okay uh, this is one of the old coal drift mines and going back to the early 1900s and this was a huge huge must have been a huge drift mine opening because these uh, Cross ties. These are railroad cross ties, 
and the they're wedged in on top and the mine cars tell you how much sediment and fill and everything after over 120 years has filled up the the mine opening and these were these would have been above the mine cart uh, tramway rails so uh, very very interesting uh, and that's how much sediment but the mine opening is right there so deep in the middle of nowhere Okay, we're making our way through the series of uh, ravines right here. You can see the topography. This is some rugged country right here. But uh, if, to know we're on the right track, this right here is a the remains of an early 1900s steel coal mine cart. And they specifically made these for the drift mines. They were shallow. They weren't big like in the big slope mines. But uh, this is the remains of a coal mine cart, and this is uh, this is the tongue right here. You can see some of the remains right here. Now this is the remains of another one that was wooden, and uh, you can see the bolts that held the wood in. So you got two that are sitting right up here, perfectly preserved in the woods. Very very rare to see a coal mine cart. So pretty pretty historic. And it lets you know you're on the right path to uh, find these old coal drift mines deep up here in the woods. So, all right. Okay, uh, this right here is a, uh, the remains of a uh, spur rail line, which should lead us right into a huge complex of uh, drift mines. And you can see the uh, coal remains right here. And that's the remains of the rail bed right there. And uh, it's right here. So just around that corner should be a whole series of drift mines. Okay, uh, we're making our way up uh, this uh, old abandoned rail bed right here, heading up in this deep ravine. And there's a series of drift mines on either side. It's uh, very picturesque, man, very beautiful. So we'll just keep heading up this way. This thing goes for about three quarters of a mile. Hey, uh, so we're making our way back down this deep ravine. We've haven't really seen anything but these were a lot of coal mines and very interesting these are uh, huge rail cross ties and they actually still have the date nails in them right there 1929 and there's another one uh, I'm not sure if that's a date nail but uh, that's just a uh, nail but it's very interesting I mean these are heavy and somebody uh, Somebody put these up here for some reason. They're scattered out all down through there. But uh, anyway, we're making a way back down the other side of this rail spur line here. So. Okay, I think we figured out what this, uh, what all these cross ties right here standing up mean. This was a mule and horse pin. They, they go in a complete, almost circle, and they had bob wire on it, so the tramway lines in the rail bed go up on either ravine, so this would be a perfect place just to uh, keep the uh, mules and the horses right here. So, okay. Well, we didn't expect this today, but uh, we'll keep uh, heading back down on the other side of the rail bed, see what we can find. Okay, hey, this is probably what we're going to run into today. These are all coal drift mines, and they're all, they're probably all going to be completely flooded. And that's the tramway bed right there. So, 
Might not find any that are open. Uh, it's, these will all be flooded, but you know, we'll keep heading down this tramway line. We might run into something here. So we uh, decided to come up to an upper tramway bed and you got water just coming out of all these mines, but that one right there is probably flooded, but uh, we'll go check it out and see what it looks like. But uh, they had different levels uh, working different coal seams at this mine complex. So we've run into this uh, a few times looking for these coal drift mines. Upper and lower coal drift mines working different seams. So there's probably a couple more past where all those down trees are. Okay, there, this is a really sizable drift mine opening. You can see. So there's the coal seam. And uh, wow. Very well constructed by the miners 115 plus years ago. There's an old wooden support timber right there. That's an old work header. And uh, Mr. Box is uh, going on ahead right here. There's some good airflow in here, lots of bats. And uh, well, there's all kinds of stacked up wood right there. And uh, interesting. But uh, that actually has another passageway right there. And uh, this is one reason why it's good to wear boots. Because you just know you're going to hit some flooded sections when you go into a mine. And uh, hard to say when anybody really ever came in here. Wow, this is just very solid. So we'll try to navigate through this water. All right. Absolutely. There's the uh, coal seam right there. Heading down, it's the box said he's heading into some water here. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's gonna. This might be where I terminate. He's found some more indications of a moonshine operation right there. Yeah. You see the. Yeah, I see them. Mash pot and everything back here. All right. Can't tell if that's a barrel. Or it's a rock. Okay, we broke off that main haulage way and we're coming into a side header. And before we mess up the water, those are tram, that's a section of long tramway rail right there under the water. And uh, there's another section. Stuck up there in the wall. And so they did that to brace the walls. Could be, but this is all stacked. The yeah. water's coming from somewhere. There's a bat, and there's a. Uh, this is a uh, some stacked walls right here. Water's coming down. Another piece of tramway rail. Uh, I got a little more headroom. Looks like another barrel up there to your left. Huh, yeah. Yeah, man, it could be another moonshine still around the corner. But all the tramway rails are here. And we got some uh, remains of barrels right there. I know it was one of the last times somebody came in this section. It's an old, old jar right there. It looks like a mustard jar. Boys, we're having some hot dogs in here. Okay. 
got some more of that red. There's a lot of tramway rails. They break off right there to your right. And uh, there's another opening right there. More tramway rails. You can see they stacked. Uh, they put those little timber supports in there. And uh, way back in there. Oh yeah. So somebody had something cooking back here with all this equipment. And uh, piece of tramway work built. The uh, coal seam is getting really thick. Yeah, that's at least three feet. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Oh man, may have to take a break here, man. <laughs> Wow, look at that coal seam right there. Dang. And it just keeps That's going. Huge. Yeah, I mean, that thing just keeps going. Look at all those uh, rail ties in place. Yeah, cross ties. Yeah, cross ties. No, yeah, who no, knows when no, somebody's no. in here, but boy, that is some rich coal right there. For sure. Wow, that's some of the shiniest I've seen. Yeah, so, I'll all right, all this box is. He's pushing on, man, and he, he's, nothing's, nothing's going to stop him. <laughs> All right. Go down, OCD will kill me. I don't even need them. Zero, five. I can't tell, this might be the remains of like a, like a drill maybe? Could be. Yeah, we're we're actually had it sit down man we're actually going up a hill yeah you want to push on ahead of me yeah yeah i'll go all ahead. right it's gonna take a miner's break yeah, go right ahead all right all yeah right. this this thing's going uphill and you can see all the stacked rock walls right there it's just uh endless man endless bedrooms decreasing slightly so we're along this uh, another haulage way here. We've gone up this little hill in the mine. Josh came across this really strange bottle right there. I don't know what that is, but and uh, so we'll just push on a little bit more. So that looks like 29th header right there. So so we're pushing forward. So, I mean, the mine open is back there. Okay, I'm uh, holding up right here waiting for my buddy. He went down the haulage way through all that water and I just didn't feel like doing it. So I'm waiting on him to come back. And you can see the uh, stack rock wall. It's got a lot of good headroom here. It's one of the reasons to hold up. And uh, just stretches off down that way. So, endless, endless uh, haulage way and uh, work headings like that one. That would be the number 30 work heading, which, see, they covered all that up. It would have gone right underneath that overhang there. So, all right, and that's uh, some really rich coal right there. You get some uh, timber supports around here. So... Well, we've been kind of wondering if uh, they had, uh, you know, smaller mules in here. 
and uh, you know to haul the uh, coal mine carts well that right there is the best answer that is a very very small I'm not even sure if it's a mule shoe but it's the smallest mule shoe I've ever seen and it was secreted right back in that wall but that is a neat find that's a first so that tells us that uh, they did have mules I mean I guess they must have been really it could have been full size or not and Mr. Box is making his way back through the water it's like the creature from the Black Lagoon in there but uh, anyway that is a neat find so okay uh, Mr. Box came on back and he said there's no end in sight None. keeps going hooks left right everywhere so we're gonna call it because we've been coming back in here for quite a ways and we got to go back out but it's good airflow and uh, you know all kinds of stuff uh, that we found bottles and like I said there's a Another early 1900s or 1890s whiskey bottle. Found that secreted in the wall and just pulled it out. So we're going to head back down this way and make our way on back out. But uh oh, there's a bat. <laughs> he just took off, man. There's, a, there's bats this deep in this mine. That's amazing. They're nice and toasty. So, okay, that'll do it.